dropped it. You know what I'm saying? But I don't care because she can. She has this is the first time in my life where right. she has like my codes. Like she opens yeah. my phone. She's like, and I Did never I feel any stress. On the air. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time I'm, I've I'm ever not, been like this in my life. Until we get on the air. Don is like, mm. I'm gonna, I'll talk once we get on the, on the air. Yeah. Well, yeah, she did it. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> but I call spice. I like spice. Am I wrong? And, but she, well, are you wrong she for I knew lying? she was coming from an unbiased place. Are you wrong place. for lying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what's so You want annoying. me to say that you're not wrong for lying? Right. I'm like, yeah. um. Yeah, she was like. No, it wasn't, it wasn't that black and white. Like, you no, know, you were like, I did this to protect her. I said, you did this to protect yourself. Um, right. So don't try to play me right now. <laughs> I did this to protect her. I lied to protect her. <clears throat> no. I didn't want her stressing out. But, you didn't yeah, want her stressing no. you but it's, out. But now it's good, though. exciting episode of the spicy life i am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker spicy Madi. and on today's episode i have a very controversial topic that i'm so excited to unpack and share with you guys and you guys get just a variety of different opinions all right but this is should we still stay friends with exes all right so to join me in the g spot i got three dudes all right <laughs> Uh, first in the G spot, I'm going to introduce Jeremy Strong, so creative director over here. You guys have probably seen him in like a thousand music videos, um, teaching hella moves that I could never do. Uh, mm. But he is currently in a relationship, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. My other guest in the G spot, you are very familiar with. I've brought him on the Spicy Life yes. before. Go back and listen to episodes. <laughs> Don Benjamin. And he is actor, producer. He also has a new product out. Uh, pronounce it for me. It's called Lave. Lave. Yes. Okay. If um, you want the French, pronu the French pronunciation, the French it's Lave. Lave. And it means wash, but here in America, we call it Lave. And those are male <laughs> products. That it's male and female. Male and female. But it's a two-step skincare regimen that's made to make your life simple so you don't got to think about it. So for men, you know what I mean? We, don't, we, think, we overthink things, so... With this, you could just do your two-step skincare product and go. And who doesn't want to have, like, easy, clean hygiene? Yes. <laughs> Look good, feel good, quick and easy. And third in the G spot, I have Diamond Batista. He is a uh, actor, writer, director, producer, um, <laughs> comedian extraordinaire. Diamond has a huge list as well of social media accolades. You guys are probably familiar with him as well. And he is currently married um, and joining us in the G Spot to talk about uh, his experience and hear your guys' perspectives on should we stay friends with exes? Now, before we get started in the deep conversation, though, okay, you guys first have to Tell us the moment that you fell in love with yourselves. So, Jeremy, we're going to start with you. When did you first fall in love with yourself? What was that pivotal moment? I fell in love with myself. Yep, you fell in love with yourself. Where you were like, damn, I really adore who I am as a man. Man, I, I think I fell in love with myself when I was a, when I was a kid. Mm. I've been in love with myself for, for, for a long time. I think I was probably like, I was probably, uh, I was probably like in third grade. Yeah, I was really, really young. And I think I just... I, a lot of things were going on in my life with uh, crazy things mm -hmm. going on. I was transitioning. I was actually born in um, a small town called Goodwater, Alabama. So I was like transitioning from Goodwater, Alabama to Atlanta, Georgia. And a lot of crazy, hectic things was going on like with my family. My mother mm -hmm. like running from a, a crazy relationship. So I think I just took it upon myself to say, you know what? No matter, no matter what's going on. Yeah. I'm always going to just be secure within myself to be able to help everybody else around mm -hmm. me. So at a, at a really, really young age, I kind of took on that, I guess, I hate this for kids now, but I'm going to say this for myself. Yeah. I took on like that, I'm the man of the house mm -hmm. role. And I said, no matter what, I had to love myself, but mm -hmm. also love everybody else around me. So yeah, I was that's like, a lot really, of responsibility really Yeah, yeah it is. It is. It is. But I think that um, I was able to do it because I always kind of looked at God as my like father, father. Mm. So I was able to like get the strength that wasn't kind of coming from me. Yeah. It was coming from a higher source. So. And this is where Jeremy Strong was. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the way you put that together. Uh, that's where Jeremy Strong. He's becoming Yeah, story. yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. For yeah. sure. I love it. I love it. Okay, Don, when did you first fall in love with yourself? Um, I mean, I've always loved myself. I guess my mother did a good job of, of showing me love. Um, you know, as in high school, I was confident. But I feel like I've gone through phases of, mm -hmm. like, loving myself, 
questioning who I am or what I want and then finding something new, loving myself. Um, but, you know, in 2020, I had a pretty public breakup and I had to do a lot of transformation within myself to get to be the person that I really am today. And I think that was like a really pivotal moment in my life mm. to really like right now, I love myself. I love who I am and what I am, what I'm about in life. And you are a new daddy. I'm a new father on the way. Oh, yes. yes. Congratulations. And I'm, a, I'm about to be a girl dad. So <laughs> oh, I'm glad that I, that I got myself situated before <laughs> having my daughter. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay, Diamond, when did we first fall in love with ourselves? What was that moment? Um, I think I've always like had a like a love for myself mm -hmm. in general, but I think uh, things really probably came like full circle and just like where I like had the self love, like the embodiment of it. I think when I found my purpose, because mm. when I, I when I think about it, like I spent the majority of my life trying to figure out what it was. That I would end up doing. Yeah. I always felt like I was pretty good at a lot of things. But when I got out of the military and I like picked up the camera and I, and I shot a joint, I was like, oh, damn, you know, mm -hmm. and it was it was one of those things where I was like, I was always trying to find like what was the thing. Mm -hmm. And when I found it, I was like super happy. Since You figured out your calling. That is so important for men. I feel like because you guys are so driven about like, not just what am I here for, but like, how do I serve? Right. And when mm -hmm. you figure out, okay, this is how I leave my mark. This is how um, I provide for my family. This is how I build my empire. And I love doing it. It makes you guys so much more free than to be available to us as women mm -hmm. uh, for the relationship. Because right. <laughs> you're like, check, I know who right. I am and I know what I want. Now I just got to figure out who to share it with. It's so important. So I love that you guys are um, already being this transparent. I want to give a little context before I start asking you the juicy questions. Um, as a relationship expert, it is my responsibility to guide um, and give healthy information and useful tools to my clients, but also to people who can benefit from advancing themselves and growing themselves. Right. And so one thing that comes up often that I feel like is a controversial topic is, uh, should I leave the past in the past or can the past come with me? And I still have this phenomenal relationship in my personal life experience. Uh, cause now I'm just talking to you as spicy Madi, the, the woman and wife in my personal experience, I am of the notion that you cannot stay friends with exes and still have an amazing, healthy relationship because staying friends with exes uh, can be extremely problematic, okay? But I want to talk about this, and I think that it's important for men who um, have different perspectives, different life experiences, different purposes and walks in life to also share through their personal journey the pros and cons of keeping exes in your life, okay? So that people can make healthier decisions for themselves, given more information and more knowledge and tools from people who have actually lived it, all right? So every now and then I will interject like my experience working with clients and then like my personal experiences, but I really want you guys to be as comfortable as possible talking about this and all your women have consented. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when you say friends, are you meaning like, like friends are like like no contact at all because I know some people. So we're gonna see. start by which is a great question. You guys defining what a friend is for you. Right. What are the qualifications to be your friend, and how do you show up as a friend, Jeremy? Mm. Well, these are really good questions right off the back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> if you ain't ready, you can toss it to. Wow. Toss it to, so toss it to um, one of your brothers. Yeah, I, I, I think a friend a friend is someone who you can confide in. Okay. Um, you have a level of. You have a level of trust and vulnerability that uh, allows you to just be yourself with. Yeah. Um, sometimes during your darkest times, you you go to this person and they may be they may they may know the things that you may need. Yeah. Or even even if they don't, then they'll they'll at least just be there to just listen. Mm. Um, it's someone that you can just laugh with, you can cry with. Yeah. If you if you need to cry, um, just that person that you just know that has your back, mm -hmm. no matter what, and. And um, they're not really looking for anything from you. They're just your friend because of they just want to be in. You guys want to be in each other's lives. I think that's um, the type of friend that I am personally. And that's that's the type of people that I that I gravitate towards. OK, so you require that in your friendships as well. Yes. That same, these are the 
the things that I offer and this is what I expect. Especially if I call you my friend for okay. real. The people that I know and, and I know I have friends and associates and I understand even some people I know they are my friends and I know that these friends may be slightly a little bit more selfish than these people yeah. and everybody's different but but the people that I know I could like if I four o'clock in the morning I could call you hey I need a ride and they would they would pull up for me. Okay. You know what I'm so saying? we got we got Jeremy's definition of friendship. Yeah. Yeah. Don Diamond, who want to take a crack at it? Damn, sure. I feel like he got that. Right. <laughs> he, he definitely, he definitely hit it. Like he definitely. You know what a friend was. Okay. He, <laughs> right. He definitely hit it. I mean, I feel like there are levels to friends. Like I, I kind of have like different friends. I'm like, okay, this is my friend when I want to, you know, when I want to go play golf, or this is my friend when we having a party. I know they're gonna come through, or like you said, your supportive friend, like the person I could call when I'm down and struggling. And advice, like I feel like there's different levels, but. Definitely, like, a friend is somebody that you in communication with mm -hmm. for sure. at, at all times. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, otherwise, it's just acquaintances. Okay. So, that's a, the communication point right there. Um, Diamond, anything you want to add to that? Anything that you I feel think, like? I think I agree with, with both of their ideas of friendship. Aside from, I don't think, for me, I don't need to be in constant con communication mm, too, with yeah. friends. I have some friends that like I could go months or longer without Facts. talking to. And then like, it's like you pick it up, like you ain't missed the beat. Yeah. But I think between the two of them, that's pretty much what a friend would be. Okay. And I'm going to give my cliche. Friends are the family that you choose. Mm. Mm. If you are my friend, you're my family, mm -hmm. which means <laughs> I also have an expectancy of I can inconvenience you. And you will sacrifice on my behalf and you can inconvenience me and I will sacrifice on your behalf. If I'm not willing to sacrifice for you, mm. we ain't really friends. You are mm -hmm. just an acquaintance. That's great. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that we're all able to share that. And Jeremy, that was an excellent like description. I'm like, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. So we have our definition of friends. Yeah. Now we're going to get into like the real meat of it. Can I hear your guys' standpoint on the relationship, am I comfortable with <laughs> staying friends with exes and my partner staying friends with exes? It's starting with me again. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, on, hey, man. here we go. Come on. Well, from my definition of friend, absolutely not. Okay. Um, <laughs> absolutely not. I do believe I had a situation before where um, my girlfriend uh, she would, she asked me, she was like, uh, my ex wants to go on, um, dinner. I guess mm -hmm. he needed like some type of, uh, closure. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, nah, but then I thought about it in a human, like a human mm -hmm. perspective. And it's like, what if I was the guy mm -hmm. that may have needed closure? And it was just that. And I was like, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with you going and you know, and I trust, cause I trust her so much. I know that our foundation it's, it's, it's solid, so I trust her. But as far as, like, people continuously just being friends and yeah. from the definition that I just gave you of a friend, yeah. absolutely So not. that kind of sounds like you're saying uh, that there is some type of okayness with the interaction, right? But that's short-lived, and it's maybe, like, a touch point where they connected, but that person is not – you're not comfortable with that person, like, staying in the life consistently. Yeah, I don't expect her to see, see her exes and just ignore them. I don't expect that. I don't. I, I think that that um, that people are human, and her ex may still be have some type of feeling, and I think that's natural. Those are natural things. But I but I don't expect you to be like, hey, give him a hug, hop, hop on him, or something. Like I've seen some crazy <laughs> things before, but I don't expect things like that. Um, you know, you can say hey and keep moving without touching. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. So, Jeremy, your answer yeah. is no. My answer is for sure. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Diamond, uh, how do you feel about it? Well, I'm I'm curious. When you said that, are you talking like just like her having no male friends at all, or was this pr particularly mm. pertaining to ex? No, no, no. Stuff? She can have for sure have male friends. I think that with the same definition. Yeah, with, with the same with the with the same definition. Um, yeah, I, she's she's had male. My girlfriend's had okay. male friends I with with that saying. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I'm not like a no type yeah. of person like that. I'm. I'm. And I try not to live a jealous in a jealous mindset. You know, my pride takes right. over sometimes. So yeah. hundred thousand percent. I'm a hundred thousand percent. My pride takes over sometimes. <laughs> but um, I, I try and get to a place where where I tr our trust is is bigger than anything that could come 
in between that until that thing is broken. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think for me, I've never had too many situations where like girls wanted to be friends with their exes. I, I think it's rare, at least in my walk of life, mm-hmm. that most relationships have ended amicably, you know? So not to say that they've all ended bad, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, maybe it's what I attract. I don't know. But in, in, in general, <laughs> we're working though, through that. We're working in, through in that. general. <laughs> I don't know a lot of females that are friends with their exes. That being said, um, I think based off of their definitions of friendship, I think I correlate with that as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that the issue I have with being friends with an ex, it's more so that there's, there's going to be the attraction is going to always be there. Mm -hmm. The lingering feelings are going to always be there and people grow. So the person that you were with in the past, y'all probably didn't work for like a selfish reason that maybe they don't struggle with Mm -hmm. currently. Ooh. So mm. then it's like, damn, you know, now that they fixed that one thing, it's hard to not compare the person that you're with with someone that you were with. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you kind of leave yourself open for like them to kind of swoop on in and just mm. take yeah. the spot. So for me, I don't I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think being friends with your exes is a thing. However, I don't really care for people to have contact, you know, mm-hmm. to some degree. You know, like if it was like, a, say, for instance, if your ex was an accountant. And, and you like had an accountant question or like, you know, they were an interior decorator and you had an, you know, something like that. I don't really care for it. But when you're talking about being friends, mm-hmm. that's a constant action. You know, that's a constant thing. So okay. I don't really. Think so you, cool. so she couldn't go find another account. I got an account for you. you know right. I, mean? I, I, I feel you. But the thing about it right. is I don't feel like where you can maybe find people that are good in a similar sector in your life. Yeah. There are some people that are like special, like you're, you're a choreographer, you dance. Yeah. So yeah, she might have access to another person that can dance, but, but maybe she you were like best. really good at this particular type of dancing. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. or maybe like you maybe you she needed a hip hop dancer and you were a hip hop dancer or salsa and you were salsa, but the way you would teach is maybe right. was the pref- preferred way to be articulated to her. So again, mm. it's all case by case with mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. you have to have like the common sense to be able to like really see what they're going after. But I think it's not something where I'm like a hard like, nah. It's just it just depends for me. Don, how are we feeling? I don't feel like you need to be friends with your ex. I feel like I feel like what happens is like when it's okay on my, what I think is okay is like if you've dated somebody that's in the circle, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like if there's circles of friends and y'all were dating and y'all no longer date, but these people are still around. Uh-huh. I feel like it's okay if everybody's cool in situations, but there doesn't need to be like one-on-one. So like, like if there's we're at no, a party and we run into each yeah, other. Yeah. Like y'all, date. like we could all have conversation, but like there doesn't need to be like, Oh, I'm gonna go have grab lunch with my ex, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know who you on the who you on who you on the, like, I'm with you, you know what I'm saying, or like who you on the phone right now? Oh, I'm talking to my ex about yeah. like there doesn't need to be any one on one about my taxes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like even with taxes, like you could find another tax person. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no. like at the end of the day, like it like if there's circles of friends, like for example, like we are all like in a like in Hollywood, it's a little bit yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? Like. Or like in the influencer you're gonna circle, like you're gonna end up running back yeah. into people, or facts, being in the facts. rooms of people, or a lot of people go to the same events and you know game nights, whatever it may be. And if your ex is there, then so be it. But I don't think there needs to be any communication where like you're texting with your ex or phone calls or dinners or any one on one. There should be no one on one interaction with with an ex. There's no point. That was your ex. Y'all moved on. It obviously didn't work. Like, I wish them well, yeah. but there doesn't need to really, I don't feel like there needs to be communication from this point on if y'all didn't work out. I agree with what you guys are saying, of course, which I, is why I was like, oh, I got to have them on the show because I know you guys are going to give like valuable insight to men or and women who may be struggling with, you know, I am in a relationship, but I want to stay friends with this person because, you know, uh, they mattered or, you know, I liked who they were as a person. Right. But I think that the points that you guys bring up is yes, there's like room for stuff to happen or to influence, but somebody will argue, well, if you trust your partner, don't you have to allow, you know, them to stay friends with exes or make choices for themselves? Like a lot of people would argue against putting that boundary in Mm -hmm. place 
or what I would even say, um, you know, I call non-negotiables and deal breakers. And part of what ignited this idea for this episode too was, um, Diamond, us doing the deal breakers with your wife. And I was so shocked and like proud of him because he had his listed out, like ready to go. And a lot of them in there were like, can't accept um, gifts from old booze or from, you know, other men. <laughs> uh, I'm not comfortable with you, um, you know, spending intimate time with uh, exes or a lot of communication with them. And I was like, wow, you really have actually like taken the time to like clearly define this and think this out. I love this and I feel like other people, you know, need to hear this because we oftentimes are very selfish when it comes to our relationships and we feel like our partner coming in, we don't want to allow them to regulate or limit because if I give them this power, well, you know, what else are they going to try to control? Right. And that's not really the healthy mindset when it comes to how to navigate your relationship. It's no longer about you. It's about our needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love what you guys are sharing. I, I feel like it's like, you're holding on to something. It's like maybe you're not fully confident that this is going to work out. So you want to kind of keep them in your pocket or and what also happens is like once you've had like sexual interactions with somebody, mm -hmm. like you said, that's always you're always going to be there. Facts. So if you're looking at them like it, it's human, you're going to be thinking about what y'all had at some right. point in time or you never know if y'all get in a room, it could spark back up. So it's like why what I've learned is like. You have to, when you're in a relationship, you have to protect yourself at all costs and your energy. And like, it's even hard having friends, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like female friends or girls having male friends because the male is going to like, it's inevitable that they may try to like mm -hmm. prey on your weakness. And even women, like some, the women sometimes want what, what y'all yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. And so she's going to see what she can get. And it's like all of these things, what I've learned is like, if you have a partner, you have to protect your energy at all costs. Yep. And it's like, why do you need the other sex around yep. that can possibly mess that up? Because it's human nature that you're going to uh, be attracted to somebody over time, the more y'all get to know each other. And so mm -hmm. like, if you have a, a friend and y'all are kick, like, I have my girl, why do I need to be kicking it one-on-one -on -one with another girl? Yeah. But as men coming up, like, and even women, like, we want a lot of times we want the best of both worlds where we're like, you know, I want to know that I could have girls around too, or I could still have my ex around. And now that I'm over here and like, you're trying to carry on this weight, just it's like ego and pride. I yep. feel like mm -hmm. when, as I start to set my pride aside and my ego aside and really look at the bigger picture, I'm like, why do I really need to be talking to other females? Like when I got my, my wife or my girl, mm -hmm. like that's, I was going to ask you guys that I was like, is it, had, did that, that change from being married like you because you guys are married yeah um, from a dating place to being married because i know for me this is the first time when i when i've been in i've been in a relationship where i'm like okay let me cut off everything i've never done that yeah. this is the first time i've you ever done like, yeah oh 100 I, I leave a little hole right. over here a little space yeah <laughs> i leave some space <laughs> right so just in case you know i might text and then exactly. i'm like oh, you texting yeah right. i mean you texting men okay that's cool if i text women all right that's cool this is the first time where i'm like yeah yo my phone is dry yeah, mm -hmm. this is the first time. Like, this is the first time ever. Yeah, you know, in my life of like dating yeah. and where I'm just like solely like, okay, let me just. I'm not gonna have any type of distraction. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just curious for you guys. Is, I'm asking now. I'm asking a question. I'm, no, I'm, not, uh, no, I'm, no, just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Like, yeah, like, from from dating from just dating to being married. Did do you have the same like perspective? Well, well, the good thing, like me, like I made these adjustments before I got married, mm -hmm. so. I messed up, so we we had got engaged, but I was still holding on to old. Mm. You know, I had some female friends, I had situations, I was still holding on to the old me, to where I thought I could, you know, text girls and say some little things, and that's not flirting. You know, like me being a man, like I could have a conversation. I'm not flirting when really you know damn well you flirting, mm -hmm. trying to see if you're gonna get that attention. And so for me, once once we realized, like, okay, we're gonna get married, we started talking to spicy. And I had to sit back as a man, like, why, why do I need to still talk to this girl? Yeah. Or why do I need to be friends with her? What am I gaining from her mm. that I'm not gaining from my, my soon to be wife? Mm -hmm. What am I gaining from her that I really need? Why do I need to have friendships with her? Like, what, what can I build with my girl mm -hmm. to where I'm not needing that? And so those are adjustments that a lot of people don't make before they get married. And then that's why they have issues in their marriage. Yep. Because they still mm. holding on to Sarah. You know what I mean? Like, nah, well, she's just a homegirl. 
And what happened was like, I'm having convers- text conversations thinking it's my home girl. But then she says a little comment. And then I reply, and I'm like, well, shit, what you mean? Get with an emoji. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, hit the, you send a little emoji, and then before you know no, it, like, facts. the conversation has went somewhere well, that you uh, can't pull yourself out of. You know what I mean? 100%. And, and that's human nature, bro. And, and a lot of times men aren't, or women too, but people aren't aware enough to catch those things. And so it's like, why even put yourself in that position? Like, but it's like you said holding on because you're not sure where this is going to go yeah and i don't want to lose out on a couple good ones that i had you know what i mean just in case case. like i had a couple good ones and i don't want to lose on these just in case and then you pull that in your marriage and you're like well just in case we ever get divorced Um, 20 years just right it becomes a habit and it becomes a habit that's Um, so unhealthy you know what i mean what what would you guys say though to the dude who's or or chick because i'm gonna put both in the hot seat what would you say to the person though whose argument is you know this person was in my life before you and this is a you thing this is a you're insecure you know and now they're gaslighting right. their partner and making their partner feel as if you know they're the problem and that it's not the ex that's the problem right i know like i've i've been around situations like this and again i feel like if you really feel like you have to be cool with the ex mm-hmm. there's ways to navigate it to where it's respectable yeah like i don't mind if my wife is around her ex mm-hmm. if it's in a group setting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and everybody is filming some There's content. conditions. There's that, conditions, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, if you really feel like you need to spend a lot of time one-on-one with your ex, you should probably still be with your ex. For mm-hmm. sure. Is like, it is it like, is it conducive to what we're trying to be? Yeah. Right. Like, that's the like, thing, If right? you want to mm-hmm. hang out with your ex one-on-one all this time, there's obviously something still going on. Well, my problem with it, too, is like, if you are taking a hard stand on, no, I'm gonna gonna let this ex go. This ex needs to stay in my life, right? right? You're taking that hard stand on it. That means that, okay, that there is something strong you value in that relationship. And if you're making room and protecting this relationship, you're not protecting our relationship. Then right. You're not protecting mm-hmm. like this foundation that you're building and it already has cracks in it because you're still living in the past. You're right. connected to the past. And you mentioned something earlier that is extremely problematic is when you are physically intimate with someone, all right? When you have sex with someone, you've seen them naked. You've seen them at their most vulnerable. Right. And so... To your point earlier when you said, Jeremy, like, well, friends are able to tell each other's, you know, deepest, darkest secrets. I can confide in you. Mm-hmm. So that means that you're creating this, like, safe space for the friendship mm-hmm. and divulging information, private details. Mm-hmm. And that's not protecting your relationship. And then if you say, okay, well, I'm not going to talk about my ex. Um, or I'm not going to talk about my current relationship to my ex. And I'm not going to... Um, spend one-on-one time with them and I'm not going to pour into them the way that I pour into my lover. So then is it really a friend? Right. Do we really need to stay Mm. with them then if you're not going to treat them the way that y'all decided or how you define a real friendship as? I mean, I I like what Don said earlier about um, the idea when you're like friends with your ex, it's kind of like having those back, those back doors, like those Mm -hmm. extra options of like, just in case. And I think I've kind of navigated in that space in the course of like the majority of relationships that I've been in. Like I, I've always kind of hated the idea of being all in with the person because I felt like I outgrow a lot of people yeah. and, and fast most of the time. Um, so for me, but it was also uh, obviously counterproductive, mm-hmm. you know, like having mm-hmm. those relationships <coughs> and having those, you know, extra options. You, it's hard to not navigate to those when the relationship is like suffering. So I think this time around in my relationship, I don't have relations at all with, with any of like my exes. I busting you out right now because you guys, I asked you guys to come on for two very specific reasons. Mm-hmm. You guys have. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, it's I'm, okay. I'm, you can I, mean, I, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot. See, I, forgot my whole, I want you to forget about the ex no, that I has mean, a stay okay. in your life. So yeah. I'm gonna give he you guys a little context. Has a in his life. He has an ex in his life. <laughs> Diamond, uh, Diamond, yeah. Diamond has, let me give you guys a little context. Diamond has a woman who he has had a child with. That mm. is an ex mm. that um, he has had to make his wife feel very comfortable with and secure with her energy being around you guys communicating. And I felt like that part of your life is very interesting because there's other people who could relate to that. And they may say, well, what about the ex I can't get rid of? What about, you know, my ex-wife or my baby mama that like, may be with me until I'm 18. How do you navigate that relationship? 
I mean, I think growing up with my parents not being together, it was like one of those things where it was like always wished that they could have some sort of like relationship. So that way I wouldn't have mm. to be feeling like, oh, I'm with my mom. Yeah. Or, you know, instead of like we still family. Yeah. Even though it felt so much like separated. Yep. Yeah. So for me, because I like lacked that and the blowback of them not getting along, I wanted that so bad regardless yeah. of who that I had sense. kids with. Yep. So when she and I had kid, I had a kid, I was like very adamant on us staying like not just cordial, but being friends mm-hmm. because I knew that the relationship was well beyond its course, but I really desperately wanted us to, to remain friends. The problem that I had a lot of the times was that like my dad and, you know, my wife, yep. they were adamant that she still wanted something romantic with me. Mm. And I could be naive to to some of those advances I, I can admit but i till this day there hasn't been like a blurring of the lines once me and her had like like really parted so for me it was more so of always like making decisions that i thought would have my son feel like you know even though they're not together yeah they're still okay and we're still a family and you know that's been something that i had to get her to understand and accept early on because i do feel like at the end of the day um and I'm like open books. So I don't mind like going a little bit deep. Go, go ahead, like, go deep. Mm-hmm. Like my, Let us have it. my my son's mom, she's currently in a situation to where like her dude, at least all evidence that I've been privy to, I should say, has been like alluding to the fact that he's probably like a little bit more on the like aggressive and abusive mm-hmm. side of things. Mm-hmm. So there's been like moments where I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, what affects her doesn't just affect her. It yeah. affects my son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I got to like, do something like help her get a spot or like have her come over, things like that. Like, I don't care about what probable repercussions I may have to undergo yeah. as long as he's good. I don't want him having to, to, to see him treat his mother some sort of way yep. and him thinking that it's normal. Yeah. You know, and there's been things she's told me that he's done nothing physical or that'd be a different thing, mm-hmm. but like just period though, where I'm like on principle where I'm like, man, I ain't never talked to no woman like right. that. So yeah. I don't want, you know, him seeing that thing and that right. is, you know, that's cool. It's okay, yeah. So 100%. for me, I feel like there's certain things you have to be flexible with to preserve, like, my child's, uh, you know, way of the world. So it almost sounds okay. like your stand on it, just for clarity, is no friendships with exes unless <laughs> you have kids with them. I feel, I feel like, though, even if you have a kid, because my parents were separated and I felt like, one thing they did was like, even when they were around with me, like they still probably had their partner <coughs> around or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you can make it to where it's still a comfortable situation where y'all mm-hmm. still ain't one-on-one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like y'all ain't at the house mm-hmm. one-on-one with, with your son, like your wife may still be there or her partner, or if it's a family or a friend to where there's multiple people. So it's never like a setting to where it's just one-on-one. All right. You know what I mean? So, I don't disagree with that. But However, <laughs> you be one on one, huh? You be one on one. No, here's the thing, though. I, I, I really like. I feel like I do. I don't want to say an exceptional, but I, I really do feel like I really do try with my entirety to put myself in other people's shoes in mm-hmm. most circumstances. Even if I make a decision that may not be popular, I try to make decisions based off of if I was this person. Mm-hmm. And I think when I uh, there has been times where it was just me and his mother and our times where I invited her so the three of us can go talk just so he feels like, you know, it's a complete like safe space Mm. to like, just really talk to my parents. Yeah. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but it's more so like case by case, there might be opportunities where I need to just like talk to her and him. Right. 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 And and it it depends on like the nature of the conversation, but in general, I do think what you can do, in navigating that friendship and not just being co-parents or being cordial is including the person. Like I know Mm -hmm. my wife was very adamant on the, on her being friends with with, uh, my son's mom. Yeah. But you know, just the way things kind of unfolded, you know, we don't have that relationship at all anymore, but it's very much like we were like game planning. Like, yeah, we want to be friends with her or at least to the point to where we could, we could all be and coexist in the same space, like in a positive way. And I think that that is a sign of a healthy relationship, right? Because she signed up for a partner who already, you know, had a family. Mm-hmm. And so it works in your wife's favor um, 
to get along with your ex. Because if, the, if there's peace in the home, right, now your child gets to benefit. Now your marriage gets to benefit. And sometimes exes can be very problematic, which is why <laughs> we want to avoid them if we can. But in situations, you can't always 100% avoid them. Yeah, and I think to be fair, you know, I don't think everything, I think everything is case by case, right? So there's going to be some situations where you have a toxic, you know, person that's your ex that has a kid with, that you had a kid with and everything. And you're not going to be able to have that opportunity or flexibility for everybody to just be friends. Yeah. In the ideal situation, I, I feel like being friends is just really in the benefit of the kid, you know. I, I totally agree with that. On the other end of the stick, Jeremy, you actually have to work with an ex. Yeah, I do. So, I do. To, okay, I do. can you speak on that? Because I don't know if yeah. I'm as big of a woman <laughs> as your girl is. Man, you know, my, my girlfriend, she's so, uh, she's so just secure in herself. Love I it. think that, um, that overall, I know for a fact, she like, I don't care what the girl, she doesn't care about the girl. She just mm -hmm. cares about me. Mm -hmm. She's like, now, the way I respect her mm -hmm. and, the, and the type of trust she kind of has in me, that's kind of what it's about. So I try and make sure that I just keep my, my home is my first priority. Yep. To make sure the peace stays within my home. That's my, her, her security, her uh, level of just love, or the, the, the amount of love I give her and the security I give her, that's my first priority. And then I know I have to do a job over here, but I also want to keep a harmonious environment mm -hmm. within my workspace, right? So me being the head of my workspace, I uh, I, I, I still want to keep the energy and, and the environment peaceful. Yeah. You know, so, um, but, but at the same time, I just make sure that if it's not work, that's all I have for you is work. That I, if, it's not, if, if it's not within the premise of us getting a job done, then I just keep it at that and I keep it cordial and I just keep it moving. Um, yeah, it's just, it, 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 can, it can be weird. Can you talk to some of the extra measures you take? Because I think that that's really important. Oftentimes you will hear a partner say, you know, well, that's your insecurity that you need to handle. And actually it's both of our responsibilities to make me secure. I have to do my part yeah. to pour into my self-love, but you got to pour into this love cup too. So if you aren't showing up on your end, then we're not creating a safe environment for our relationship mm -hmm. to thrive. So can you speak a little bit about like how you make her, how you double down on that security for her? Um, well, number one, I spent a lot of money on flights to bring her, <laughs> <laughs> to bring her where, wherever I am. I try and make sure that number one, I, I, tra I travel the world a lot. So I go to crazy 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 places so I, I bring her with me a mm -hmm. lot and when she's around me I, I think physical touch is one of her top love languages. love languages yeah so I just make sure that she feels love inside of inside of her love language mm -hmm. so she's next to me my hand is on her thigh it's I'm just making sure that, that gestures like, little gestures we're not you. too much crazy <laughs> PDA like that but but I just want to make sure she just feels feels appreciated and feels like it's me and you yeah I don't care about any of these other things so I just take those extra measures to make sure that, that she feels secure. Um, so I bring her a lot of different places with me. Um, and, and I think, like I said, just our conversations as well, um, just, just back and forth, just letting her know that this is what this is. And one thing that I know that we can't control is yeah. anybody else's energy. Yep. I, so us knowing that, if someone does still have a thing for me, or if they don't, I don't I'm not saying that they do, but... If, if that ever comes to play, I can't control their energy. Mm -hmm. I, we can only control what happens between us. So just to make sure our foundation is solid, um, we, have the, we, we talk about that a lot. And um, just being open. And if, and if I do anything that makes her feel some type of way, she might be like, yo, what's that? Da, da, da. And I'm quickly to say, address it and be like, oh, okay, maybe I could have done that different. Because also you're learning, you're learning how another person even views trust mm. or how another person views um you being solid because yep. to respect. me respect 100 percent. so to me something may not mean anything yeah but to her it's like oh that means that means something to me so i have to oh that bothers you so i'm gonna change it or for her it may not mean anything but for me i'm like oh no nah, that bothers me so and just being open enough to talk about those things and being 
that's another level of just vulnerability and learning that is a crazy thing as well. But um, I love this, Jeremy. I think one thing that you're highlighting is um, how important the communication and perspective is. Oh, so sure. I think you're coming at it from a like understanding that we may have different definitions or different beliefs around certain topics like 100%. hanging out with exes mm -hmm. or, you know, friends of the opposite sex even. But your definition isn't wrong and my definition isn't wrong, how can we see eye to eye right. on these definitions and what can we negotiate? How can we come to an agreement so you feel good and I feel good? I, I think, think one that's of the, what I love hearing. For sure. One of the biggest things, I think we, we spoke about this a little bit off air, but articulation, man. Yep. Articulation is so important because communication is is a great thing, yep. but you can be speaking and speaking and speaking and the other person- and not saying that. They <laughs> not, they, they're just like Charlie Brown. It's almost <laughs> like Charlie Brown because right. you're not learning- the way you need to speak for them to understand and hear you. Mm -hmm. So I think that that um, that's super important. And that's one of the biggest things I've learned with within this relationship is just the way I'm able to articulate um, with her mm -hmm. and caring about articulating the way she needs me to articulate. Because sometimes my pride will get I, I don't know she needs to hear a certain yeah. and I don't I still won't do it. <laughs> My pride gets in the way. Like I'm, I'm 100. My pride will get in the way like that sometimes. That be my ego. And then I'm like, Jeremy, you know, I sit with myself. I'm like, just say it. You know how to say it. You know, you, you know how to say it the way she needs you to say it. So why don't you just say it the way she needs? Y'all do I'm like, this. All right, let me just go. Thinking off of what you're saying, though, like, like I, I feel like I'm so good at, at articulating myself mm -hmm. and expressing exactly how I feel. Mm -hmm. Like my wife is horrible at mm. it. You know, and it's okay, but what I'm talking about is I can articulate myself and how I feel, but articulating it in a way that she needs to hear it to is a whole nother thing. But see, people have to be receptive to, to you articulating yourself, period. Like if she, that's one of the things that, that maybe not so much now that we like have you, yeah. but like I know prior to that, yeah. I'm so good at articulating myself, mm -hmm. but it frustrated her and it made her feel. And that's why relationship coaching is so big. <laughs> yeah. never, Go ahead. And I never, yeah. knew, and I never knew that before. Plug, then. Yeah. It's plug. like you said, we think, we think we're saying what to, what we need to say to get through, but they may not be hearing it like yeah. that. Bro. Yeah. So it, and that's why I say it helps to have like an outside person. that's not it like does. somebody in your immediate circle that doesn't, that can give like their opinion mm -hmm. and you just, just going to take it because we think we're articulating it a certain way and they may not be understanding in the same way. Yeah, like facts. there were so many times where like, I would have to call spicy and be like, <laughs> I'm trying to say this and she's not getting it. Yeah. And then like, she's agreeing with me, but it's still seeming like an argument. <laughs> So how do we word this the right way? Bro, I love that. I, I'm like loving For real. this. He has, Diamond has me on speed dial now. I can expect a call from Diamond every bro. week. <laughs> Man, bro, you know what's crazy? One of the things, I, I have this view on men and men saying the way they feel that sometimes men can say the way they feel and because you're a man, people expect you to be so, so strong yeah. all the time that she may hear you, but she just expects you to be strong. And right. I've been telling, we've been talking about that lately. I'm like, babe, She's like, oh, I didn't even know that that you were being vulnerable with me. Oh no, that's me. That's me being vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. and, but, but I think that you become such a like, um, especially if you're the person that everybody leans on. Yeah. Right. People don't expect you to ever break down and be vulnerable with them. Yeah. So they're like, ah, oh, they then, may have said that, but ah, you, they're probably gonna be over. But then it we tomorrow. add you yeah. being a man on top of that, For and sure. there's already this social construct around right. like what you have permission to share. Exactly. And if you share weakness. Oh, now you are a weak person versus mm -hmm. I'm human. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I'm a right. man, but I'm still human. I still feel. And I think that sometimes as women, we're guilty of forgetting your guys' feelings matter. <laughs> you guys. I think as men, we're guilty at believing our feelings matter too, though. Right. Because that, that comes with maturity. That comes, yeah. with, that comes with a level of maturity to say that, oh, I don't, I'm not weak for feeling like this. Yeah. Oh, I'm not weak for saying this. I'm not weak for saying that I'm wrong too. Yeah, that's right. a, that was a big thing for me. Right, I have a problem sometimes oh, saying saying I'm wrong, or I have to sit with myself first and be like, "Dang, she's right, bro." When, when, I, I, was, right. when I called Spicy, <laughs> I caught her, and I was having like a, a similar issue. I was like in the driveway, like and she was like telling me, "Go in there, tell her she's right. You are wrong," <laughs> and what you what you were just saying, and I was like, "Bro, like this, like," and I'm so like not a shy person or nothing, but. I was like, man, I would rather speak to like a hundred thousand people <laughs> than go in there and like do what she said. And when I tell you, like, a lot of the times in relationships, you'll argue so much that you'll already know how things are gonna play out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I already knew I was like, I'm gonna go in here. We're gonna we're gonna have a little fight. Going to sleep, 
east, west. I'm waking up and it's going to be a little awkward for a while. Then we're going to figure <laughs> it out. And I was like, just doing that. And she's like, go in here. Say you were wrong. Take accountability. And that you were being like immature. And, and I hated that she told me to tell me I was being childish or something like that. Because I'm always like, you're, so, you're being immature. You're being immature. And then this is me having to go in there and do that. And I remember I was like, man, here we go. I go in there. And I, I, I kid you not, I, I did do that. I was like, look, I was wrong. I should have did this. <laughs> I was mature. I did everything. I was like, boop, 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 boop. Boop. And I did, I did that. Yeah. And then, like, literally, she was, like, so different and receptive it to it that I felt like I was over there doing that little corneal smile, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I also did that. It was, like, kind of one of those. And it was oh, diffused man. in, like, like, five minutes or, like, something yeah. like that. And I was like, wow. And that's when I was like, yeah, I definitely, yeah. going back to what you said, having a relationship coach, I think is, it's, but one thing I always say, and I never did, I never practiced what I preached when I say this, but like one thing I always believed is that people should have like counseling or relationship co uh, coaches prior to things going yeah. wrong, mm -hmm. opposed to sure. so when it goes wrong, like now let's go get some help. Cause For I think sure. that's always kind of the mindset. Yep. Facts. But For I sure. think like that whole argument was like, it was so like, whoa. For sure. And I heard like, because to your point, like Don was saying earlier, like, yeah, me and, you know, off camera, like, yeah, me and Leanne are thriving, got a baby on the way. Like, you were so happy. And, and you also said, like, because prior to that, like, we right. did the work to we prepare work. so that we could mm. enjoy our marriage. For sure. Like, so that we could just live this, you know, happy, abundant, yeah. like, full life. Like, I don't remember the last time, like, that we argued, like, if we have dif disagreements, like Spicy taught us how to like sit and talk it out. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait and to get to that chapter. <laughs> and I'm only on week two. And, geez, and, so I'm and, like, and man. You, because what happens is like, what happens is, oh, like you man. said, like you want to, you want to be like, okay, maybe I am wrong. So now you're taking accountability and she's taking accountability. So instead of y'all trying to be like, I'm right. I don't care what mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's where the mm -hmm. argument is. But when y'all are both taking accountability and y'all can sit and talk through it, then it's, it's not really an argument. It's like trying to get to the point of, and even Spice said, like, she may still be wrong or you may still be wrong, but at least you're like, look, I don't feel like I was wrong. I feel like I might have handled this situation differently. Like, mm. look, I don't, I don't feel like I was wrong with talking to this person. Yes, I could have handled it differently to respect mm. you more to where it wouldn't have ended up like this. But th the reasoning in my mind of why I did it, I still had good, you know, intentions. Mm. But it's the accountability on both ends instead of, no, you're wrong. I don't care what you're trying to say. Yeah. Mm. And those, I needed to hear that. And more. that's like the one. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to hear that. And that's sure. what Spicy helped us so much yeah. in our relationship to why we don't butt heads is because mm. we both kind of like, I'm going to have accountability in this situation. I'm going to try to talk through the steps and explain why it happened and then be like, okay, I could have done this differently to where it didn't affect What's the change me. that I you know could make You know what I mean? Like what time? changes yeah. could I have made? So now next time I know if I'm in that situation, I'm going to approach it differently so that it's not the same thing. Because a lot of times we approach it the same every time yeah. and we keep getting the same outcome. <laughs> we wonder why we keep fighting mm -hmm. over the same thing. Mm -hmm. Damn, we fight over the same thing every <laughs> month. Yeah. And it's because you're not noticing what you need to change so that it doesn't happen you know mm. yeah and that and that is is crazy how much of a difference it yeah, makes i think reflecting more on like because like i think when anybody's bothered you you know why you're bothered yeah but like if you actually like think yeah. about why they're how bothered. i show up in this situation right. yeah. to make them bothered mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so much easier though like I, like after that fight i like a couple of other like little disagreements we've had since then. It's like, we go back to that. Now mm -hmm. we remember how we handled that situation. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, hold up. This is where I got it wrong. And then she'll be like, and then when you, I think seeing somebody actually take the time to acknowledge where they like pissed you off or yeah. like made you mad, makes you be more receptive to how you could have made them mad. Yep. You know, opposed mm -hmm. to y'all both just feeling like you don't get where I'm coming from. You don't get where I'm coming from. And now you guys are mirroring each other's behavior, yeah, right? Exactly. So like if you got two people who are refusing to do the healthy behaviors, it's never going to be solved. It's always going to be repeating this negative vibrational pattern over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we get you guys out of the drifting? How do we get you out of this hole? Because now you guys have dug it so deep that it's so far to climb out of. But if one of you guys are like, you know what? I'm going to start, you know, making steps to like patch this up. Now your partner will start to see the difference and your energy. We forget how much power we have over our partner. Your energy really affects them. You have mm -hmm. the ability to mess up their day yeah, or to make their day amazing. Sure. And so if you take that accountability, you're doing a shift right there and <clears throat> showing them like, hey, in this moment, I'm showing up different. 
And it may not happen perfectly every single time. But what matters is you're taking like steps each time to climb up this mm -hmm. growth ladder. Mm -hmm. And eventually they're not going to stay in their funk. They're not going to keep repeating it because they're going to be like, dang, you're elevating. Don't leave me behind. Let me come with mm -hmm. you versus you're falling. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. going to go down in there with you, you know, guns a blazing. Mm -hmm. Like it's I, such a huge difference. I was, um, I was watching some podcast and I was talking to a guy of mine, but he was telling me he's been married for 12 years. And he said the reason that what what helps us so much is we both wake up every morning, like how can I make their life easier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the in in every situation, if you're thinking how can I make my wife's life easier, she's gonna be like he's making my life so much easier. What can I do to make his life easier? Mm -hmm. And then it's gonna go down to everything, like talking to people when you're out and about, like whatever it is that usually is like causing any kind of argument, yeah. if you're thinking like, how can I make her life easier? Then it's just going to be so back into you. And before you know it, y'all are going to be at peace. Like, man, we're, there's so much peace because all we do is just try to make each other's lives easier. <laughs> and then it's like a battle to make each other's lives easier. And then another thing, like, uh, my, um, it's about Steven, Steven Jackson. Mm -hmm. He was talking about like his wife and he said his boys was making fun of him because he like checks in or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, He's like, y'all can make fun of me all you want, but I'll check in with my wife because I'm showing respect. Yeah. Like, mm. If I go out, if I'm at one restaurant and I go across the street to another restaurant, I'm going to hit her like, yo, we going across the street. Not because I'm a punk, but because I respect my wife. Mm. And, and she doesn't have and, your GPS. And she, and, maybe she don't got her, <laughs> and, and she don't got your GPS, but <laughs> even like, even with the tracking thing, like when dude's like, I don't want her to trap me, but. <laughs> like there's a couple things, bro. Like if you're if if your wife genuinely has trust issues or whatever, and you're trying to rebuild your trust, mm -hmm. or we live in a crazy world and cats is getting robbed and killed. Safety, uh, yeah. Like there's so many things that go into it, and us as men, we're prideful. And we're like, Man. I don't gotta check in, or why I gotta give her my passwords or my GPS with all these things. But what I learned as I got older, bro, and as like I'm changing, like I'm like, you know what? She got my passwords. She she got my GPS. People may think it's a punk, but at the end of the day, I respect my wife. Yeah. And I'm not leaving any room for error. Yep. Because now I know that I'm on my P's and Q's to where, okay, my wife has everything. I know that, like, I'm not going to slip up because I'm I'm tapped in today. And then it, you create a new habit to where it's like you just living for you and your wife, bro, and she's doing the same for you. And that's how you keep all the outside energy outside. And it's just y'all... And that's how you build. Didn't you say you were considering doing this for the first time? Like, because, Don, you oh, have been yeah, doing yeah, sharing yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. passwords and uh, information with your partner. But, Jeremy, you said, like, yeah, for what's the first crazy time, is it's open ended. It. This is probably going to bring a conversation <laughs> back up if we put this out. But, yeah, she, she <laughs> actually. <laughs> She's going to hold him accountable. Cause, cause like, we, didn't, um, we, didn't, we didn't make a decision yet, but this is probably about to bring it back up. Yeah, me and my girlfriend, we, we just, she asked me the other day, she was like, do you think we should start sharing our locations with each other? And at first I was like, I've, I've never done that before. Like, yeah. Right. Um, but now that I look at it in hindsight, I, I kind of think about like all the things just, just she may get hit on a lot or anything could happen. And just us being able to locate each other because yeah. I have nothing to hide. This is the first time ever in my life where she, somebody grabs my phone and I feel no pressure. I would, right. I would usually be sitting there like For a little sure. sweat. <laughs> ah, well, I, this, but this is the first time in my life where she can, she, she can have my phone. I have, it's no pressure. She can have For my, sure. whatever. There's no like, uh, there's no uh, type of any type of things, but yeah, this is, this is something we discussed. We still haven't made a decision, but um, I can see why it's beneficial, uh, especially on her behalf or and me, too, because yeah. you never know. I could get into God forbid, but I could get into any type of thing. I'd be hurt and she could know exactly where I am. Right. And I know she would be there before anybody else would be there. So, um, yeah, for but sure. I'm going to bring up the argument that most men are going to say or women are going to say when they hear that they have to share location. Right. Yeah. And we kind of touched on this when it came to your location being um, tracked. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at Diamond. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, good. I'm, I'm looking about I'm like, I, I kind of feel different about a lot of that stuff. You but. do or you don't feel like location could be tracked or you could share passwords and stuff. I don't like the whole giving up the password stuff. And that's what I wanted to touch on, because I feel like you also speak to a voice of. Some there are a lot of people yeah. that don't. Yeah. I mean, don't. I feel yeah. like where I, I'm such a logical person, right? So I do understand the logic in the security of sharing location, mm -hmm. right? And I respect that. And I think that in today's world, like, like today's world, 
the, today's world with like like the PNBs. I mean, I ain't no PNB, you know, and, and stuff like. But still, though, it's like people are just acting up, cutting up, mm-hmm. doing like the crazy stuff. So she's like going somewhere. And I don't know where it's at. It could be sketchy, whatever. I get all that, but at the end of the day, I feel like I do take value in my privacy. I don't want to feel like I don't have a space outside of anything that mm-hmm. I'm attached to. I mm-hmm. like having my own identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I like being able to know that like there are things that just belong to me. There are conversations that just belong to me. Mm-hmm. I know that if if my woman saw like text messages between some of my boys, she might be like, damn, I didn't know you talk like that. Mm-hmm. And that's just guy talk. And I, and I feel like I don't want to have to explain that to you. And I, and I feel mm-hmm. like the same way where like I'm totally fine with her talking to her girlfriends, having a group chat talking yeah. about... This dude's built like this. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, like, do you, you know? But I feel like when you allow somebody to have that sort of access to you, you have to explain things that you probably shouldn't normally have to explain. Mm-hmm. But you would, you would hope that, to me, she has my stuff. We talk about this. She has my passcodes to my phone, right? But I don't I expect you to never go through my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like you may have, I may have your passcodes. I'm not going to go through your phone. That's the respect level that, 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 I would hope that we have between each other. And right. I think and that I, we do have between each other. I also, also though, bro, the thing too is there's a couple of things because I used to think the same way, but when you like, when you're married, like ultimately they say there should be no, like y'all Who's know, they? like y'all know every, like, <laughs> the me, like, like, just like, like I can <laughs> go through my, like I can go through Leanne's phone <laughs> and I'm like, if I see conversations with her and her girls, it's not going to be a different character than who she is with me yeah and mm. same with me and my boy like me and my boys may talk about stuff and they send videos and then i'm laughing and we joking but it's not a different character to where i'm gonna be like damn why she see that she saw a different side of you me she's I mean? not pretty and, too and so the thing is you there shouldn't be a side of you that you feel like you have to hide from your wife or your girl which is and and i could be wrong in this and everybody has their own opinion but i feel like as you're moving into a fully healthy marriage that like you shouldn't feel like you have to keep a certain side of you that she's not going to approve of because yeah, I get like guys, we have our own guy talking. We'd be at the course and I got my guy group chats and we guys be talking crazy in there. You know what I mean? But for the most part, it, like I said, it keeps you on your P's and Q's because now like knowing that she has the past codes of my conversation, I'm going to watch how I am speaking. Like, because what happens is you start to suck off, your boys energy because you in a group chat with your single boys mm. and they send in videos of some girls that was clapping it and all that <laughs> stuff and you get sucked back into that old energy that ain't even really conducive for you or your relationship but because you know that you sharing your passwords and everything it's going to kind of keep you on point to not fall back into that those old habits either so there's that argument where it's like this is and this is conversations that i've had with like devon franklin and and um Tony Gaskins and like powerful men who transform their life. And they were like, these are things that are going to keep you walking on the right path. Yeah. And it's going to feel uncomfortable at first because we're so used to being that way. And we're so used to majority of our boys saying that this is how you're supposed to be. That when you come over here, it's going to feel uncomfortable because you're going to be like, I feel like such a goody good or approved, yeah. bro. Like, why am I, why am I doing? Like, prior, I feel corny as hell. Why am I doing this? Prior to me meeting my girlfriend now, I did a year of celibacy, but also semen retention. Ooh. That? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. It's where you don't ejaculate. Oh, wait, no, boy, I didn't hear, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Celibacy yeah. and for semen retention. Year. Okay, for, for tell, tell the world oh, what damn. is celibacy and semen retention. Yeah, so um, for a year, I just had no sex. No, no sex, and I also didn't, didn't masturbate yeah. Yeah. For, for a full year. I did it for, I'm a, I'm a very, like, disciplined type of person, so yeah. mentally I try and put myself through mm-hmm. through tasks, but I wanted that change point in my life, though, because yeah. I, I think I was, I was, like, gearing up, and as I was shifting and changing as a man, yeah. I was gearing up for a new season in my life, and I knew that one day I did want to Cause I'm wild. I, well, not like, I'm not wild anymore. But I used you to be wild. wild. I yeah. was wild. <laughs> I travel the world and I'm on stage yeah. and and you have a million, right. hundred thousand girls screaming sure. at you at one time and whatever it is you want, you you know what I'm saying it's that lifestyle. So I was wild, very 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 wild. So I got to a place where I was like, yo, I don't think I'm. I'm, I'm over it. Like, let me see if I can do something that I feel like I'm so attached to mm-hmm. and just completely like dry it out. Mm-hmm. Like just and don't do powerful. it at all. And it's, it's mm-hmm. a lot of power. So oh, wait, how was you after, after that? I'm so curious. Um, you know, it's crazy. I'm going to, 
Tell it. Tell Even it. But, so, yo, I started having wet dreams. I ain't had a wet dream since I was like a little <laughs> kid. I would imagine. A hundred percent. Like the smallest thing. Oh, uh, you know, over a course of time. And then then I started, then my then my dreams and my visions and my clarity mm. started becoming so like, everything was so clear. Wow. And right after after that, a little, a little time passed. And I'm not going to lie and say after my... Uh, after, after I stopped being celibate, I didn't just go back to just like, now I'm so holier than thou. <laughs> right, no, right, I went, right. I kind of sl- started sliding back into old ways mm. for a little while. Yeah. And then I kind of just made that decision to like, you know what, let me try and you know, let me just do it different. And then right. I met my girlfriend now. And I think that it Ooh. all, but it gives yeah, you like, it a all pow- like you get like a, a different type of power for sure. By, and, and by denying that part of you. And to that like point, the, the, the power of denial, right? We don't want to be restricted. Part of what Diamond was saying was like, right. I don't want my freedom and my liberty right. taken mm-hmm. away. It's a lot of times why people won't even commit in relationships because they yeah, want right. the freedom. That's, that was me um, for sure. And so I think it's very important what you guys are saying for us to highlight is you feel as if in your independence, that's where your power lies, but you are actually doubling your power in partnership, right? Because iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. So when you make a commitment and a vow to someone, that person is holding you accountable to being a better person, the best version of yourself. And when you slip up, that person is like, hey, but you made this commitment. Hey, but you are the most determined man I know. Like they're able to speak life into you because you've given them that position. And when it comes to like the sharing and exchanging of passwords and location, you're thinking that, well, if I give this person that power, it's gonna become an obsession. They're never gonna trust me and I'm gonna have to over explain why I sent that text or why I'm in this location. And then the truth of the matter is, is sometimes, it is great to give that power and then trust them that they're not going to abuse it. And if you trust yeah. your partner, mm-hmm. because that's usually the argument we have is like, well, if they trusted me, they wouldn't need this. Well, if you trust your partner, you should trust they won't abuse it. Mm-hmm. Give or, them that power. Or even power. use it. So that, to me, it's like, why, why go through my text too, messages? Like, and that's my the thing, too. Is like, since but I've given it. I have my husband's bank account, his credit card, his, the yeah. social media, everything. I ain't got time to look through it, and uh-huh. I know he's they just want to know that they like I they just have, know I that have the power because <laughs> it's so. Mm, because because I, feel, so, I feel, I feel like I feel like you because she has my stuff. But if she right. was to just go through my text messages, what is it? Because if you go through my text messages, you will end up finding stuff that means nothing right. because you're looking for something. So you'll right. you'll interpret something that doesn't even mean what you may right. think it may mean. Why do you Why do you smile? Like this. So why'd you say, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why'd you put three A's at the end of, yeah? Like, like it could be something crazy right. like that. It's like you start interpreting things that don't don't mean what they seem. I mean, so what I could say, though, because I do understand the logic in what you, like I said, right. I always, I'm like a student of logic. I'm always right. trying to understand things that I probably don't. And I had another friend who pretty much said something similar, like giving her all this access keeps me on my P's and Q's and things of that nature. But I also feel like I don't ask for what I don't give. Like, I'm not the guy that's, like, trying to go through your stuff. Or, like, I mean, I'm even kind of OD with it where, like, if she grabs her phone to do a text, I'm over here looking away. And it's, it's just by my nature I'm mm-hmm. like that because I respect people's privacy. And I, I do feel like where I understand the logic and yeah. what you guys are saying, I'm not disagreeing. I think it becomes more of a, a preference. I mean, right, we're all different. So I think we all approach things differently. Mm-hmm. And I do feel like where I'm completely okay with being transparent mm-hmm. and open to like, hey, where were you? Who were you with? When are you, know, like, even though for me it gets tedious and it gets annoying, mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't mind answering these questions. But at the same time, I'm very like, you know, okay with, some separation. You, I, I just feel like that. You said I don't ask what I don't give. That's that's a real thing. I think I used. To, I, I'm trying to get out of that mindset a little bit because sometimes the other person needs something different than mm. who you are. I like that. A hundred percent agree. See, I like. See, Jeremy just gave you the nice. bombest bars. Bam. Tip right yeah, now. Like okay, and, okay, it's a piggyback. See, at the end of the day, I'm not so set in my ways and so stubborn that I don't acknowledge that I want. If I want to be in a relationship. I still want to do what's best for that relationship. Yeah. So if it was a thing for her where she was like, hey, listen, I understand you feel this way, mm-hmm. but I feel like for me to be all in or at peace, I need these things of you. Yeah. Then I would take that. I, it wouldn't become a fight or an argument of a, well, I feel like this. I would really take some time to digest on how 
much that means to me mm-hmm. and am I willing to give her that? Because it's not that deep. It's not like I'm like over here like, nah, if you feel like you need those passwords, I'm telling you I don't, mm. you know, and I'm like, nah, we got deal breaker. You know, see, it wasn't a deal breaker. Yeah, it wasn't thing. a deal breaker. It wasn't there. a deal breaker, Georgina, but it's just something. You better ask now. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not instigating Look at you. Look at you. Android, It's not a deal she breaker. She didn't even ask him for that. <laughs> she, but she, but she, she's never actually asked. But it's one of those things where I organically, I don't go to that. If she said, hey, I need that from you, then I'd be like, I would say why? Because I'm an inquisitive person. Yeah. So I'm going to say, well, why do you need that? What does it give you? And if she says peace of mind, then I'm going to be like, oh. So I think well, ulti- I think ultimately though, like when you're when you're in a relationship with somebody else, and whatever, like especially for women, if, a lot of times they're not even going to look through it or none of that. They just want that peace of mind. So if she's asking for it. It's literally just like they want to know that they have some kind of peace of mind. It's it's not even a control factor or anything else. They just want to know. And as a man, it's like. As you're like maneuvering, you're like, okay, we're about to spend the rest of our lives together. Like, what can I do to, to keep her at peace as possible? <laughs> because, like, since I've <laughs> like since I did that and we've been married, like, she's at so much peace. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's we like, we didn't even ask each other for each other's passcodes. I think she needed to do something in my. I needed her to do something in my phone, and I was like, oh, my passcode is that. Right, 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 right. And she had it. She was like, what's your passcode? Oh, my passcode. It's crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. like how like because I used to be the same way where I'd have my phone in my hand at all times. And since like it's like a it's like whatever yeah. you know what I mean. How do you get that though? Because I I do feel like for me, un- understanding what you, what you're saying, having that that uh, ability to do something, you you don't really go to it as much. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like there has been instances in relationships where like they didn't have that access, and maybe you see a notification or something, and you're like. Shh. I got to explain this. And it's like more so like a thing of if you look, if, if I feel like this, if, if anyone looks hard enough, They'll you find will them. find hey, that, that happens with me, they though, because I told you I still work with my ex. Right. Yeah. I still sometimes feel a certain way. She may text me about work mm-hmm. and it'll buzz and I'll see her name right, right? there. And my, my I know my <laughs> I know my girlfriend sees her name and my, she doesn't care. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. doesn't care. But it'd be like. You feel it. I feel it. And see, and, and see, I feel it. Me, and I'm like, yo. And that goes back to what she said, like being friends with your yes. like, and, and I be, moment, No, I had to tell I be, I had to tell her. I'm like, yo, don't just like you might have to email me, Shorty. Like, don't don't just be texting <laughs> right. me like you but can text me at four in the morning. That's what that's yeah, boundary. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. Boundaries. Exactly. Boundaries. boundaries. Like you gotta boundaries, email me. Yeah. Don't but just see, hit me in a text. my space, like be me directing. But the good but see, but if she read if she looks at the the conversation, it's not gonna be nothing to where you disrespect True. it. Yeah, facts. True. So right, facts, that's facts, that's what it ultimately comes down to is like you don't gotta be sweating like if you sweat like <laughs> if you let a conversation carry off somewhere, you gonna be like, damn, I shouldn't have sent that emoji. You know what I'm but, but if you hear bzz, but at two in the morning, bzz, bzz, right? Bzz, 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 and it just her name, her name, her name, her name. She might be asking you about like rehearsal or, or some crazy. What are we supposed to wear for? Like real quick, it just but, looks crazy. But the, but the, thing, but the, thing, crazy. But but the thing is that. though, but when you've given your telling what it is, yeah, facts. And when you've given your and when you've given your passwords, you gonna be more confident when that goes through. You gonna look at it. And you ain't going to be worried because you already know you have access to go read it if you want to see what we was talking about. Yeah. That, that's real. But I even personally it. feel like <laughs> I don't want her to text me at 2 o'clock in the morning. No, no, email e- those, email me because if, if, if her, if some guy that she was Facts. dealing with, they doing, they have a, Facts. they're shooting something together. <laughs> yeah. He was like, he's texting her at 2 in the morning. What do you think about this scene? Like yo, but Facts. buddy, you don't, if you don't wait till tomorrow, <laughs> big buddy, right. you better wait for tomorrow. <laughs> like right. you better ask her tomorrow, bro. About keeping yo. that relationship right with like an ex or um, maybe it is someone of the opposite sex. Because um, I definitely, just for the it's record, I believe in having yeah, friendships facts. of the opposite sex. I'm gonna put that out there. Me and my husband do. I definitely for encourage sure. that. But with any relationship, there should be boundaries. Mm-hmm. Exes in particular, when you're texting at inappropriate times or you're communicating and you're giving someone the power to hit you whenever they feel entitled to you because mm-hmm. the one they've already had you before. So getting them out of the mindset of, I don't have access to you like the way I used to, or we can't spend time the way that we used to. There's a lot of people who feel like, no, it's a 100% strictly platonic relationship, but I still want to be able to go to the movies with them. I want to be able to go to dinner and lunch. I want to be able to um, invite them to my birthday party. Right. That's a one hard pill for your current partner to swallow. So somebody said to you, I want to go 
to a movie with just my ex, me and my ex only. That's weird. Yo, get out of here. So, just leave. this does happen. <laughs> this so does weird. happen, right? I've seen everything in my profession. And I think that That's be- weird. because the, the blame oftentimes goes to the partner for their insecurities, yeah. we do them an injustice and it is unfair for us to not take accountability for how we may be contributing to the partner questioning our behaviors or to the foundation. Maybe we didn't lay a secure enough foundation. And yes, maybe that person came in with their own securities, but we're also not trying to help heal or help them work through them by adding on to the fire, right? By like adding fuel to it. So if you can do as much as possible to protect your partner to make them feel safe, you know, why would you not want to add to that? And I think Diamond, I just want to circle back to this. I think somewhere along the lines of giving up what you think is like your freedom, there's something that you're afraid of is going to happen if you give that person full access. I just don't like the idea of it. It's not that I'm completely give, opposed give to it, but I mean, again, it's just like, like kind of like what he's one thing he said where he was like, um, if she were to go through your phone and even see messages with you and your boys that maybe she shouldn't discover like some person that you aren't actually mm-hmm. right yeah, yeah. So, like, so like for me i don't know i feel like i'm not the same person that mm-hmm. i am with my boys mm-hmm. that she knows okay you feel like there's a i know I, but i do it i'm intentional about it okay the well same it's not way. even that like we're, we're different people but like saying things because ultimately if there's something that you say in that conversation that you feel like she ain't gonna like or just be disrespectful then like that's the point like you we are different people with our boys of course man i'm completely but, different with but my if boys you say, if, they send, if they send the clapping video i'm like damn no, that's yeah. what's clapping. you know what i mean yeah <laughs> you know? But, but and i feel like as like the deeper you get with your girl like as far as that like she's gonna she may look and laugh at you mm, you yeah. know what i'm saying compared to be like that's not you but if <laughs> but if she if like if she knows who you are it's gonna be a little different. Let, you know okay, let me I mean? let me like, tell you. There's a there's my a, husband, there's a I've, my husband's text messages is crazy from his boys because he still has a lot of single friends. That mess <laughs> has all kinds of videos, photos in there. But because he has given me full access and we trust each other 100, percent I'm not concerned about what they're doing to make themselves but, giggle. But that comes with a certain level of maturity, also, right? Like yes. I would argue, if you're cool like that, then that means he trusts your because level of maturity. Because he's giving me full round access. There's nothing that he's withholding from me. When you withhold from someone, now that leaves room for doubt. Now that leaves room for error and questioning. Because if something is so important to you that you have to guard it with your life, you got to guard your phone, you got to guard your exes. That means, oh, this means more to you, one than me and my safety. What are you trying to protect? What are you trying to hide? I'm trying to keep and preserve my perception that you have of me. And I mean, that's just me being real. <laughs> I mean, fair. no, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't mind. I don't want you thinking I'm an asshole. No, or a I don't, I don't mind just keeping it a stack when it comes to certain things. Like the, the diamond I am with you guys isn't necessarily the diamond I'm be with my boy I grew up with necessarily. Like when I meet someone in business, you know, it's, it's just like, I do have different mm. hats and I don't think that there's an issue with that. I think, People should be conscious of where they are and who and who they are around. Yes. So like just to give like an example, again, it goes back to me feeling confident in your level of maturity. If I believed you to be someone that was mature enough to see a message of like like some of my boys sending somebody clapping and me sending some clapping hands and mm-hmm. some peach emojis. And you're like not thinking like, damn, you want her or damn this. You know, mm, if right. I if I feel like I'm just having fun, yeah. you know, and that's just me and my boy. Like, you know, like we wild and I want him to feel comfortable like he can goof with me like that. Yeah. Then I'm good with you. But if I feel like, you know what? She sees that she sees this, the peaches. I'm going to be like, damn. Oh, uh, well, uh, th- you know. I don't want to have to deal with all of that kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't like having uh, mundane conversations or meaningless conversations or conversations I just would rather not have with you. And I feel like you can alleviate that by knowing for a fact that you're not going to have to see that. I had a situation. (laughs) I had a situation and I'm just just throwing out like I didn't know that people were like actually like do this thing where like you can look at somebody's recent emojis. Right. You have a thing where like you can like, let me see your recent emojis. And you looking at that and it's like, oh, whoa, OK. So I'm, th- I'm laughing about like, damn. So this girl was like really pissed at somebody's like recent emojis. Woo-woo. So I was like, well, look at like I was like, let me look at mine. And she like, let me see. So I'm like, oh, shit. You know, so I'm like, well, look, there was a peach. There was a peach. Everybody know if a guy got a peach emoji. Maybe he was going to Georgia. <laughs> yeah, by the way, you where you about to travel to? You said the peach. I mean, you yeah. going to Atlanta? You going to the city? I, I feel. I just feel like. Man, I just feel like as you're like, if you're about to spend the rest of your life with somebody, 
like you i just you wake up feeling so much better if you don't feel like you're hiding an element of yourself i like that i, I just feel like i feel like just me living in two different both of the worlds like i was a person that felt like that and i would you know i would have this side of me and then over here she would get a certain part of me yeah like now being the full transparent this is who don is yeah. mm -hmm. i like and that. we're together like you have to, like we're together forever you gotta accept you don't gotta code me. switch for your partner you know what i'm saying like yeah. you feel so much better even as just as a person <clears throat> and that's in any room like if i'm in a room with with an executive and i and I say my nigga chill out or whatever it may be <laughs> like this is a uh, the person that you're getting right in all elements and it's okay but if you're this drastic person over here and you do not want her to see because you feel like she's gonna leave you or it's gonna be an argument uh, yeah for but, sure but eventually like at the end of the day like it's a it, and she loves it's all you, com Devin. I feel like it's all like, conversation you know what I mean oh, yeah, no, I'm, in, I'm listening to, to, to hide certain parts of your personality right you aren't giving them your full self and that means they're, you're comfortable with them loving you at 70% because this mm. other 30% is hidden and preserved for other people who you also love. Why can't she see what makes you so lovable to them? She, might love, she, she might love that part of you. Too. Right. <laughs> she may be like, Come on, just send me some. Like, okay. I mean, like, send me some that's how, you like it. that's how you like it. Let me bend over. Let me right. try it. <laughs> Again, like, I'm, I'm telling you, whenever I have any conversation, regardless of the scale or scope, <laughs> I am very receptive in general, right? And I'm listening to Don, and I'm like, hmm, I do understand this, and and I and I do agree with this notion of being able to be your true self all the time. I think, and I think a lot of guys might feel the same way. One of the main reasons that I can think of for people not wanting to have that sort of transparency in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's really only comes down to two things: one, you got something to hide, okay, and two you want to preserve your perception of how she may view you. Right. And I think it comes down to me having a certain level of confidence of my partner's maturity. Okay. And if I felt comfortable that you could see something like that and just take it for what it is, boys being boys, yeah. the same way if you had a freaking buffo dude with some sweatpants and y'all all sending eggplants to each other, I don't care. Right. You know, I have that level of maturity. Mm -hmm. If I believe my partner to but have you that. You don't think your partner does. I think my There's partner is very mature. <laughs> and I think that my partner is really I think, mature. I think, I think it's just, honestly, you. it's just, coming, <laughs> there's a lot of people that agree, and I even agree to an extent. I think it just comes down to, like I said, communication, yeah, articula articulating it, and y'all get on, because of what marriage is and relationship is just getting on as much of the same level as possible. I agree. And I think, you know I think, I mean? Don, so it's like, if you feel like she's not at that level of maturity yet, like, it doesn't mean she can't get there, but it's, it's up to mm. you to get yeah, her, her there yep, now. Yeah. Like, have that conversation. I think it's about right. having so the conversation. That's and care enough to have that conversation. That's what you signed up for was, no, I'm going to grow you. I do. I think that, because I think when I had that situation happen, it was more so like, well, damn, it's just a peak. And this is how, and it was like the energy change. Right. Whereas yeah. I do think if it was a conversation, I was like, look. You got to understand when I talk, yeah, I, I do think that actually probably would uh, you yeah. preface it, like yeah. let, let her know, you know, and I'm not it's saying that you got to go give her full access tomorrow, but I do think also, Facts. and I'm going to bring it back full circle before we close this really quick. Cause this was a load of conversation. There are so many other things that I would like love to unpack that we're going to have to do a whole nother episode on. Cause mm. I feel like it went from like X's back and forth to like password and trust. <laughs> but, uh, so this is going to be just controversial on like several ends. Um, Side note, just to like wrap up the like exes conversation, um, I really love what you guys were saying just about like how you're showing up for your partner and what are you doing to contribute to, you know, their security and the benefits that, you know, it it adds to the relationship when you know that you're protecting them at all costs. So I really appreciate you guys for like sharing your stories and giving sure. us like insight and even, you know, tips on how we can navigate the relationships better. You guys are going to tell us where people can find you if they want to learn more about you, um, something you may be promoting. Go ahead and do your shameless plug because we are wrapping up. Word, man. Um, you guys can find me everywhere at the Jeremy Strong, um, the Jeremy Strong .com, Instagram, um, TikTok. And make sure you guys follow uh, underscore everything strong. That's me and me and my girlfriend's new business. Actually, we're about to we're Ooh. kicking off right now. Nice. Um, full fitness plans, full nutrition plans. Um, ladies, uh, clothing, men, athletic clothing. Love it. So everything strong. 
Don, where can they find you? Y'all can find me at Don Benjamin. That's on all social platforms. And make sure you check out my new skincare line, Lave. That's L-A-V-E. It's a his and hers. It's literally a two-step skincare routine that will take you two minutes to do. It's a spray-on skincare. So definitely check that out and amplify your life. Hey, Diamond, where can they find you? It's crazy because, like, you stay on my ass about skincare. And <laughs> I bet you a lot of guys are like, man, I don't even do the skincare because it just feels like wow, such fact. a task. You said two like, steps. I, I, I'm, I'm going to get some And, and the thing is, I didn't some. know until I got with Leanne and then I started, like, seeing her use all these things and I was like this is so complicated it's so complicated like, what, <laughs> what is like, all this different stuff and so I was like for me I wanted to create something that I could use easy so I was like you literally spray on the serum so you funny. spray on the moisturizer that's perfect I mean every day like put this out yeah. uh, anyways uh, at Diamond B Films <laughs> that, that's where you find me um, everything that I got coming my full slate things is about to get crazy next year so Yay. anywhere everywhere at Diamond B Films that's where you find me I love it. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com, click and subscribe, um, refer a friend to the episode, and there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.